Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. My name is Sabelle. I will be your facilitator for today's session. I am super excited to get started. We have some absolutely amazing and phenomenal schools here to tell you a little bit about themselves. Now, I preface that uh, by saying we do have about 45 minutes on the clock here. Uh, so this is a little bit more of an appetizer session. So I highly recommend that you get out your pen and paper, your phones, take some notes, uh, grab some contact information, and then follow up with these schools if you are interested. Now, without uh, further ado, before we get started, I just wanted to make sure that we cover some housekeeping items for this session. Remember, you are muted and your video is turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. It is a webinar style format virtual college fair. So you're probably wondering, well, Sabelle, how do I ask all the questions that I have? Well, that in and of itself is a great question. You will go ahead and look at your Zoom toolbar and somewhere in the middle will be a button that says Q&A. You're going to go ahead and use that q and a button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. Now I stress at any time, we do not have a live Q and a happening at the end with attendee questions. So it's really important to be asking your questions that you have for these schools all throughout the 45 minute session and not at the last minute. They will be answering those questions, typing you answers back throughout the entire time. Now, another thing I ask for you all to do when you're asking questions is please make sure the school's name is within the question. Once again, make sure the school's name is within the question so we all know who the question goes to. Now, I believe this is the last day for the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair three-day uh, session. So uh, we do have two more sessions happening uh, for this evening. But again, these, uh, this is one out of many college presentations that are offered. So you can always check the schedule on the website. Now, maybe mom missed out on today or a friend or grandma, grandpa wants to check out these schools too, or maybe you just wanna relive the fun. Well, you can absolutely do that because all of these sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Brooklyn Tech. All right, without further ado, I'd love to get started with our first school. We have Lemoyne College. Hello, thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And so again, thank you. My name is Colette Montgomery. I am the Director of First Year Admission at Lemoyne College. And in the college town suburbs of Syracuse, New York, you are gonna find us, Lemoyne College, the youngest of the 27 US Jesuit colleges and what many people refer to as Central New York State's hidden gem. The 160 acre hilltop campus known as the Heights is home to about 2,800 undergraduate students, most of whom live on our residential campus. The city of Syracuse is in the center of New York State and is about a four to six hour drive from most major cities in the Northeast, just minutes from regional bus and train depots, as well as an international airport. While our students definitely benefit from the perks of attending a smaller college, our location close to a city and a large university really creates a true college town experience, including shopping, dining, outdoor activities like hiking and skiing, and of course, internship opportunities. As you're considering colleges, you may have heard the term Jesuit education, but might not know exactly what that means. When learning about Jesuit colleges, you're often gonna hear the phrase cura personalis or care of the whole person. That means it's an education with the focus on the mind, body and soul and a path of developing a love for learning and a growth that you're gonna have with you long after you graduate. Lemoyne students come from all different backgrounds, all different interests, all different personal and religious beliefs. You don't need to be a Catholic to attend a Jesuit college, but this style of education really helps to create a community of well-rounded critically thinking global citizens. Our average class size of 20 to 22 students help to foster relationships both inside and outside of the classroom. Our professors are at the tops of their fields and their focus is your education. If you're looking to engage in deep conversations, get hands-on experiences in the classroom, access internships and opportunities, Lemoyne might be a place for you to thrive. Our core curriculum, our classes, our faculty and staff really help our students prepare for life after college and our placement rate for students in a career or graduate program within six months of graduation is 96%. A typical Lemoyne student is gonna appreciate a comprehensive 
liberal arts education with preparation for specific career paths through popular majors like business, biology, nursing, political science, theater, psychology, education, just to name a few. Um, but all of our programs are in one of three colleges that are not mutually exclusive. We also have a bunch of accelerated programs and partnerships, including PA, nursing, occupational therapy, law, business, and so many others. In addition to world-class learning and career ops, students are gonna find a warm and welcoming college atmosphere with a vibrant and engaging social scene, thanks to championship level division two athletics, our performing arts center, and over 80 clubs and organizations. Our academic profile is pretty straightforward. You'll see here on the screen, we look for well-rounded, curious, motivated students who wanna challenge themselves. The average GPA of an accepted student is about a 3.4 or a B plus, we're test optional. Um, all of our applications are free on the Common App or on our Lemoyne application. We don't have a preference which one you use, um, but we will look for the, your application, your personal statement, your transcript, a letter of recommendation, um, and that can be from your counselor or from a teacher. We have early action for November 15th as a deadline, enrolling admission with the February 1st priority deadline, but our PA program requires a deadline of November 15th. We have merit-based scholarships of up to $25,000 a year, and 95% of our students receive some type of financial aid and scholarships. Lastly, we have a PROMISE program that provides students with an additional $2,500 scholarship per year. That PROMISE program also guarantees to keep you on track to graduate in four years, connect you with a mentor, promise to give you at least one internship, and a mock job interview. Visit our campus, come see what we're like to learn how life would be as a dolphin, even from the comfort of your own home. You can take a virtual tour, you can meet with a faculty member, you can chat with a current student or an admission counselor, whatever one you need. Um, but definitely let us know if you are interested. I'll put my email in the chat um, and you can reach out to me to receive more information. But that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. And I'll throw my email in if you have any questions. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Lemoyne College, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, hello everyone, my name is Kaylee Galbraith. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission at the Rensselaer or RPI, whichever you prefer. Um, and we'll get going. Maybe. Okay, um, so RBI is located in Troy, New York. Um, we're about 15 minutes from Albany. Uh, Troy itself is a great little city with tons of amazing things to do. Uh, we have a really great farmer's market um, that happens every Saturday um, in the fall and in the um, spring, summer, winter, year round. It's uh, really great. Our students love to go check that out as well as some great restaurants and little shops. Um, as I said, we are about 15 minutes from Albany. So we do have that bit bigger of a city there um, with concert venues, shopping malls, all that good stuff. Um, we are about two and a half hours from New York City, three hours from Boston, and three and a half from Montreal. Um, so definitely located in a really great space with tons of amazing things to do. And on top of that, we're super close to the Adirondacks. So you can go hiking, skiing, and all that other fun stuff. RPI does have five schools of study. Um, we have our School of Architecture, our School of Science, our Lally School of Management, School of Engineering and our School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences or HOPS. Um, we like to say we have really low walls between these schools. So you can take courses in all of the different schools. You aren't just sectioned to your one school. Um, and it's also really easy to minor or dual major in different things. Um, so that's really awesome. For School of Engineering, we do have 11 different engineering majors. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, definitely check out the ones that we offer. On top of that, if you know you want engineering, we do also offer an undecided where you can kind of get a taste of all of them and then decide from there. Um, in our School of Science, we do have a great computer science program. Um, that's definitely our most popular major, but we do have the traditional sciences like biology, chemistry, physics, and all that good stuff as well. Um, Haas is going to be our humanities, which is really going to take a look at the more scientific side of things. So we do have psychology, we have philosophy, and all those um, great humanities majors. Um, every student is required to take at least 24 credits in our humanities school. Um, this really kind of, A, gives your brain a break from all those technical courses, um, but also really helps to create an interdisciplinary approach and allows you to talk with people from different majors and 
make sure you're able to communicate with everyone um, while also making yourself more marketable. Um, we are a research university. We do get over $100 million in research funding each year, which is really awesome. And more than 900 students participate in undergraduate research. Um, if that's something you're interested in, it's definitely an option for you. And it can start as early as your freshman year. Um, so we love to have our students in the labs. Not only do we do um, research in the traditional things like biology and those sciences, but we also incorporate music and technology and see how that you know, plays with um, our everyday lives and things like that. So a ton of research happening at RPI um, to get involved in. One thing I do wanna to touch on is the ARCH program that we have here at RPI. Um, what this is, is after the after your sophomore year, you would spend the summer on campus taking your junior level courses. Then the fall or spring semester of your junior year, you would spend away. What would you be doing during your away time? You could be doing a co-op, an internship, travel abroad, do an independent project, research, whatever fits your goals, we're gonna help you to accomplish those. This is really gonna help make you career ready and get you that experience that employers are looking for. Um, it is also time neutral and cost neutral. So sometimes when you have a co-op, you may be graduating a semester late. In this um, scenario, you won't do that. You're still gonna graduate in four years. Um, so definitely a really great experience for our students. For student life, we do have over 200 clubs and organizations on campus, everything from academic clubs, multicultural clubs, spiritual clubs. Um, we have a ton of music-based clubs. You can see some of our clubs listed here, as well as a picture of our pep band, who's at all of our hockey games. Um, speaking of hockey, we are division three for everything except men's and women's ice hockey. We have 23 varsity teams, as well as club and intramural sports for people to play. Um, so if you're interested in playing something, but you're not at that, um, D3 level, or you just want to have fun with it, we have something available for you. For applications, we are on the Common App, the Coalition App, and we have our own Candidate's Choice application. We do not have a preference for which one you want to use. Um, the Candidate's Choice application does not play well with Naviance, so if your school strictly uses that, maybe choose a different one. Um, that being said, our students typically have an A minus average in a challenging curriculum, and you have to have taken biology, chemistry, a lab-based physics course, and math up until at least pre-calculus. So financial aid, 100% um, of our domestic students do receive some form of financial aid. Um, and we do require the FAFSA and the CSS profile for that. And finally, give us a follow. Um, definitely check us out on Instagram. We're doing some really cool stuff there. Um, we have the ABCs of RPI going on right now. So you can definitely get a ton more information and learn a lot about that. We have takeovers from student clubs um, and different departments all the time. Um, so definitely check that out and definitely come visit us as well. Um, we are having visitors, so we'd love to see you on campus. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have St. John's University. Beautiful. Good evening, everybody. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, definitely glad to be here and share with you guys about our university. Uh, so at St. John's, we have a little mantra, right, that the focus is on you. Um, at St. John's, we want to make sure that we do our best to make sure that all of our students have an individualized experience as they are going through the university. At St. John's, we are Vincentian University. Uh, we're Catholic. Uh, we are a Catholic university at St. John's as well. That Catholic and Vincentian side of the university speaks to our commitment to community service. Uh, we do a ton of service uh, throughout the community in New York City um, and throughout all the five boroughs. We are metropolitan, being that we are in New York City, based in Queens. Um, we're in the middle of Jamaica Estates. Um, however, our campus is gated. So when you're on campus, you kind of get a feel that you're on a legitimate college campus. You know, you're kind of outside of the hustle and bustle and all the going on of the city. So you really do still get that college feel. And we are definitely still a global university as we do offer many study abroad programs. So we have a campus in Queens. Queens is our main campus where I'm at right now. Uh, we got a campus in Staten Island as well and Manhattan where we have many, uh, a couple of our business majors. Over abroad, uh, um, overseas, we have a Rome campus, Paris and Limerick, Ireland, um, where our students have the opportunity to travel overseas and 
get to experience different sides of the world. So at St. John's, our student body is approximately 17 to 18,000, give or take uh, on a yearly basis. So it may seem pretty big, but I'm gonna talk about why that's not exactly the case in a moment. Um, we have students from about 47 states across the US and over 123 different countries. Um, so you'll get to meet people across from all different kinds of walks of life. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to 1. Um, you'll almost never be in a class with more than about 25 kids or so. Um, so your professors will be able to get to know you, know your name, and help you out on an individual basis. We have 17 Division I athletic sports on our campus, uh, including men's and women's basketball, volleyball, men's and women's soccer, baseball, softball, and a few more. Uh, those sports are fun to engage in and go to games, um, even if you're not participating in. But even if you're not participating as an athlete in one of those Division I sports, we do have opportunities such as intramurals and club sports to participate in if you'd like to on campus. Um, those fall under the umbrella of our over 180 student organizations on campus. Um, everything from cultural organizations to gaming and um, food and fashion and everything like that. We, if you're interested in something, we have the organization for you. But one of my favorite parts about St. John's is the alumni network. We are encroaching on that uh, wonderful number of 200,000 alumni. Many of our alumni still reside in New York. Um, so the connections that you're able to build uh, from going to St. John's are tremendous. So we have over 100 different undergraduate programs through five different colleges on the campus. We have our College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, which hosts our six-year PharmD program, which is one of our most popular programs on campus. And those who go through that program are almost guaranteed jobs. The Pharmacy School of Pharmacy and Health Sciences also hosts our biomedical sciences major. Then we have CCPS, which is our Collins College of Professional Studies, which hosts stuff like our sports management and criminal justice majors, which are also super popular. Our St. John's College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, we like to call it the ologies, right? You'll find your psychology, sociology, criminology, uh, and things of that nature in the St. John's College. Our School of Education has a track for adolescent education and childhood education that both end with your certification at the end of your fourth year. And finally, our Tobin College of Business, uh, which houses things like accounting and finance. Um, something that we really love about our Tobin College of Business is that we do have five-year programs that allow you to graduate with your MBA in your fifth year. So a little bit of some application uh, information. Um, we are test optional at St. John's, meaning you do not have to submit an SAT if you don't want to. Uh, the only program that is going to require SAT, we are rolling out a nursing program in 2023 and that will require the SAT. However, um, most of our other uh, majors on campus are test optional. So if you take the SAT and you don't do so hot and you don't wanna submit it, you don't have to. Um, we'll, but we do require your high school transcript. So we will be taking a look at that. Um, if you apply test optional, right? And, and generally speaking, we take a holistic approach. So uh, it definitely helps to include these optional materials, which are a personal essay and some letters of recommendation to your application if you are going to apply test optional. Some scholarship opportunities that we have, uh, every student will be receiving some level of merit scholarship based on how well you did in, in school, you'll get a couple of dollars that way. We also offer a Catholic scholarship um, for students coming from Catholic schools. There's a service award for any student whose parent is a firefighter, a police officer, or a veteran, um, among some other scholarships that you can also apply for. Almost all of our students get financial aid, so you'll definitely be helped out in, in paying for that tuition. It won't be too much trouble. And if anybody would like to reach out to me, I will put my contact information in the chat so you can reach out to me and ask some questions. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for St. John's University, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have University of British Columbia. Awesome, thanks so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan Harrington here representing the University of British Columbia in Canada. 
And I am here to help you figure out if UBC might be a good place for you to consider for university. I also went to UBC myself. I did my undergraduate studies in geography, as you can maybe tell from all the maps in the background. I'm so happy to answer any questions about the admissions process or student experience side of things. I'd like to start things off by acknowledging that UBC's two campuses are located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of two um, different indigenous nations here in British Columbia. On our Vancouver campus, we recognize the Musqueam, and on the Okanagan campus, the traditions and customs of the Silks Okanagan Nation. This is an important acknowledgement that we make at the beginning of every presentation or event or gathering at UBC as a reminder that these lands have been places of living and learning long before the campuses was here and our ongoing relationship with these communities. I also think that the acknowledgement and the action that comes with it really helps to form an important foundation for many of UBC's values. And as you're thinking about where you wanna go for university, I hope that the values of that place are part of your decision. UBC is an incredibly diverse place it's the most international university in North America, and there's a lot of supports and services to make sure that students from all over the world, um, from lots of different life experiences, feel really welcome and safe and included here. We also really value sustainability and have a climate action plan that aims to completely eliminate our greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2050. Um, and that's just like one of many parts of the climate action plan. It's sort of a living learning laboratory here, so we're constantly thinking about the ways that we can live more sustainably and have an impact on the world. In terms of what I'll be talking about today, we'll discuss our academics, our two beautiful campus locations, and the many ways that you can get actively engaged in learning. And I'll also touch on some of the ways you can learn a little bit about our application process. So with many universities to choose from in the world, UBC is proud to be in the top 40 research uni universities worldwide. And I really like to highlight the um, research side of that. Undergraduate students are encouraged to get involved in research as early as their first year. And we invest over half a billion dollars into research opportunities in all fields of study. In terms of fields of study, there's lots of things you can choose to study at UBC, over 260 different undergraduate majors. But when you apply to UBC, you need to pick from one of 44 bachelor degree programs. This could be Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Applied Science, Bachelor of Kinesiology. Um, and then from there, after maybe your first or second year, you specialize with a major, minor, honors, et cetera. In terms of our campus experiences, like I mentioned, there's two. We've got the Vancouver and the Okanagan both in the beautiful province of British Columbia on the west coast of Canada. You can see where we're located in relation to the rest of North America there. And I'll start by talking about Kelowna, which is where our Okanagan campus is located. It's a great fast growing city, very entrepreneurial. So if you're interested in technology or innovation, it's a really cool place to be right now. They call it the Silicon Valley of the North. In terms of weather, you'll find hot, dry summers and colder winters because it's in the interior part of the province. Uh, but overall, beautiful area. Um, so lots of activities year round. And the campus is located about a 20 minute bus ride from the downtown part of the city. It's our smaller campus community with um, about, 20, about, excuse me, about 10,000 undergraduate students. And there's a lot of really great unique campus city partnerships that can, that can connect you with that industry, you could say. The Vancouver campus is about a four hour drive or one hour flight to the coast next to the city of Vancouver. Vancouver is one of Canada's largest city, cities, very international, really a gateway, gateway to the Pacific, and it's considered one of the best in the world in terms of quality of life. You'll find a little bit more moderate weather here, some rain year round, less cold winters, but again, year round opportunities for activities on the ocean and the mountains. The ski season just ended, well, it ends like tomorrow. Um, so that's been a great thing for me this year. Lots you can do. The Vancouver campus is the larger campus with about 46,000 undergraduate students. Um, and it's about a 30 minute bus ride from the downtown part of the city. In terms of what you can do at UBC, there's truly so much. I'm sorry, I don't know if you can hear in the background, my roommates are blasting Olivia Rodrigo um, because we're going to her concert at the Vancouver campus tonight. Um, but that's not necessarily related to being at UBC. It's just, anyways, um, there's lots you can do. I mentioned research. Lots of great work experience opportunities that are open to both domestic and international students. We have, have lots of athletics teams and clubs that compete and travel internationally. And in terms of going international, um, have over 350 different partner institutions. So you can do exchange programs during your time at UBC. Instead of telling you more about those, I thought I'd just give you a bit of an example of what students do at UBC. This is Valley. She's doing a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree with a major in creative writing and minoring in applied animal biology. So the cool thing about what she's studying is that there are two very different subject areas that she's combined based on what she's interested in. She is from the Seychelles, um, so is an international student and has found many different communities on campus, including working um, to represent students in student housing. Um, she has been on the 
synchronized swimming team. She has her own radio show, so you can tune in to UBC's radio channel and hear her play tunes. She has some music of her own, actually. You can look her up on Spotify. Um, and I see her regularly skateboarding around campus between classes um, and her job working as a campus tour guide. So, so many different ways that you can really make your UBC experience your own, depending on what you're looking for. To talk a little bit about the application process, there's th three key steps. The first is to, is to decide where and what you want to study. You might check out our website, different programs we offer, and the different admissions requirements you need to make sure you've met, which you can find depending on your current curriculum. You can apply online by January 15th. We have a specific application and make sure you submit your documents um, a couple months later. I'll note that we do have awards and scholarships available for international students. Um, they come in two different categories, our need-based awards for students with significant financial need, and then ones that are more merit-based, so just based off of your grades and your application. Feel free to connect with us soon, take a campus tour. They're offered virtually or in person. You can find us on social media. Feel free to send me an email. I'll put it in the chat one more time. Thanks for having me. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions to the University of British Columbia, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Babson College. Awesome, quickly share my screen. All right, should we be able to see that? So let's get started. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Dario Guerrero. Let's see, I don't know if that's full screen. Um, but my name is Dario Guerrero. I'm an assistant director here at Babson College. Um, if you guys are unaware of where we are, we're actually located in Wellesley, Massachusetts. Um, so about 10 miles outside of the city of Boston. Um, to kind of go into more detail of who we are and kind of what we offer for students. Um, so we're a school that is an all business school and kind of how we uh, prepare students is that we educate them to be entrepreneurial leaders or they're making great economic and social value everywhere they do go. Um, kind of when you Google Pride Babson, the first word that pops up is entrepreneurship. Uh, we've been ranked now actually 25 very recently updated uh, number one for the last 25 years in entrepreneurship and again because we're preparing students to leave Babson and kind of be able to uh, make a change wherever they go uh, they might not be kind of entrepreneurs in the sense of starting businesses uh, but again they're able to think on their toes kind of adjust to the trends and kind of what's going around uh, kind of on, on around in the world and so again students are leaving here with that mindset that's kind of what we call it an entrepreneurial mindset and applying it again to their jobs, kind of what they're involved in on campus and so much more. I'm um, kind of going into our curriculum. Um, yes, we are an all business school, as I mentioned, uh, but students are getting, definitely getting kind of a wide mix of what we do offer. And so 50% of our courses will be in business where you're getting a strong foundation, whether that's in accounting, finance, uh, marketing as well. But then you're also getting 50% of your courses in the liberal arts, kind of getting those soft skills you necessarily wouldn't get we're gonna be crunching numbers or kind of coming up with a flyer for a project that you're doing. Um, so kind of what makes us again very unique is that typically you would hear um, schools offering majors and minors. Uh, we offer one degree program uh, that is a bachelor's of science in business administration. And um, what we allow students to do to kind of customize their academic path is what we have is called concentration. Uh, students have about 25 different concentrations for them to choose from, and um, those range from kind of different realms of business to pursue. Um, some might be, again, in marketing, some might go in finance, um, some might do leadership as a concentration, something around sustainability as well. And so, again, it allows students to customize their academic path and kind of, again, get to focus in more on something that they want to pursue post-graduation. Uh, concentrations aren't required among students. Uh, they have the opportunity to concentrate in one thing up to two and then you actually again don't have to concentrate at all and so again students that maybe don't concentrate are thinking a wide range of courses allowing them to get a wide range of skills again in, in business or other kind of facets that again will they will be able to apply to their careers post-graduation um, so kind of one thing that's also very unique is that we do have a partnership with two institutions in the local area uh, one is Olin College of Engineering which is kind of right on our campus if you are to come by one day Oh, and we also have a partnership with Wellesley College, the world-renowned uh, liberal arts college, uh, about 10 minutes from campus here at Babson. Uh, with this kind of partnership, we allow students to cross-register at either institution um, up to a course per semester. Uh, by the time you graduate at Babson, you could have the opportunity of graduating with your Babson degree, coupled with maybe a certificate of engineering if you take up to six courses at Olin. Um, or maybe you've been able to take advantage of the Wellesley courses and kind of take a deeper dive into a language or something that, again, kind of helps you with your coursework. Um, some students have taken a psychology course and how it plays a part in business and kind of going about marketing and so much more. And so, again, students are doing that and also being able to mingle with other students. Um, again, we are a smart school. 
Uh, we have about an undergraduate population of about 23 to 2400 undergraduate students. Uh, but kind of with this partnership, we add so much more to our community. Um, so you definitely don't feel that you're seeing the same faces on a day to day basis. Um, and so kind of some of the courses that we do offer more specific, uh, we are a very hands on school. Um, so none of your courses will be lecture styled. You're not sitting in the classroom for about an hour and a half, uh, just listening to a professor. But instead, you're really working in team settings, kind of preparing again for what you'll kind of imagine uh, your job will be like in the future. Um, so again, as it says, every college teaches you how to think, but we teach the students how to do. Um, so you are taking courses that are, again, very hands on. Um, in your first year, we have a course called the Foundations of Management and Entrepreneurship. Uh, we're actually starting a business as a first year student. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to work in a team setting and Babson will give students up to $3,000 to kind of start this idea off the ground. And you'll see the life cycle of a business for the entirety of your first year. I mean, it's the longest course you'll take. And so again, you're really taking away so much from this experience where you're working with a global kind of community. Um, about 30% of our students are international students coming from about 80 different countries. I um, mean, domestically 49 out of the 50 states. So kind of in your team setting, you're in a sense traveling the world and kind of giving different perspectives and opinions and learning how to work with different people. Uh, we also offer other courses such as McPhee. We'll kind of use a lot of acronyms as a business school, um, but it's the management consulting field experience where you'll get the opportunity to work with local kind of um, businesses in the Boston area where you're working with them on an issue they have. And by the end of the semester, you're pitching them this solution that you come up with. And so again, on other opportunity students kind of take advantage of. Um, kind of one big number I'll point to at the bottom of the screen is students are definitely taking advantage of the inter internship opportunities we do have for them. Um, maybe that internship will be abroad or domestic. Um, that is something, again, students will have the opportunity to choose from. Um, again, abroad opportunities are very common here at BAPS, and about 60% of our students are going abroad at least once during their four years. Um, we have a program almost anywhere in the world you can think of. Um, so again, uh, the only place we don't offer, unfortunately, is Antarctica, so hopefully you weren't thinking of that. Uh, but anywhere else you can think of, we definitely have something for you. Um, so again, you'll definitely have the opportunity to travel abroad, maybe take some courses um, relevant to your concentration, or maybe kind of have it coupled with an internship. Aside from kind of being in the classroom, yes, and that does sound bad for students are very academic heavy, uh, but I can rest, I can definitely promise you, you have so much more to do. Um, you also can be playing sports as well as other community organizations. Um, also kind of you, as, we, as I mentioned, close to the city of Boston. So you're getting up into the city, taking advantage of that life as well, and kind of coupled with the residential offer that we do have. Um, kind of students, as I mentioned, going into internships and so much more. So again, there's so much information I can share with you guys, but uh, due to time, I kind of will skip over this. I'm kind of going into a uh, kind of application process. Uh, we do have deadlines. We do offer. We offer early action, early decision. Um, so definitely take a look online as we do kind of find ourselves down, um, going into that process very soon. Um, but kind of, you know, regarding um, contact, definitely reach out to us on our social media pages, uh, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or our website as well, where you can find any, on any of us uh, information regarding counselors and so much more. And so uh, thank you guys so much for having me. Wish I could have so much more time to share, but uh, if you have any questions, I will drop my email in the chat section. So thank you guys so much again. Thank you. If you have any questions for Babson College, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Binghamton University. Hello, everybody. I'm Craig Broccoli. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for Binghamton University, which many of you may know, it's part of the State University of New York. So I'm actually going to share my screen briefly and give you a, a visual overview. I'm actually based here in New York City. So many of you may see me again sometime soon. Brooklyn Tech is a very popular school for Binghamton. Binghamton is also the top public university in New York, and you're at one of the top public high schools. So there's a, a deep connection here. I, I did study at Binghamton as an undergrad in our engineering college and then business for graduate school. So I love speaking about Binghamton. And for those of you who have not seen it or been there yet, we're about three hours away, upstate New York, right around the rolling hills of Binghamton, the greenery in the background, that's actually part of campus. That's our, our 200 acre nature preserve. And when I say three hours away, we're right outside the city of Binghamton. So it's a 900 acre campus right down the road from downtown Binghamton, which is a small college city. Now, everybody lives on campus. That's a big part of your student life there or, or in the surrounding area. But your typical day in the life is right in the middle of campus here, walking between your variety of classes and cafes and the University Art Museum. Right in the middle of campus is the student union or the marketplace, as we call it. There's 450 different clubs and organizations that come together. It's an incredibly diverse campus. 
but that's the outcome of that. A lot of different opportunities to get involved. Again, everybody lives on campus, but you live within a community, especially your first year. I lived here in Mountain View College and then College in the Woods. Uh, these are different communities. There's five of them. They each have their own themes, their own traditions, their own dining halls. They're set up like little mini villages in a sense. It's the, the Oxford style of living. It gives you a small college inside of a larger university. Of course, my favorite actual aspect is our 200 acre nature preserve. Our students even have their own farm on top of campus where they grow food for some of the dining halls. And then down the road is the city of Binghamton. So this is our downtown campus is about five minutes, but it's just part of your student life. It's not a big factor there. It's one of the many factors. Nearly at this point, $200 million worth of new smart energy research centers just opened up in conjunction with our sciences as well as our engineering complex. A lot of research is happening. We're an R1 research university, but one underlying factor, and some of my colleagues at different colleges emphasize this, is that everybody at Binghamton will be taking courses in the liberal arts. That is foundational. That is the opportunity for you all to go out there in this world and make a change happen based on your skill set and how you apply that. Now, you might have an interest in the arts, the fine arts, performing arts. You can certainly do that, as well as double down in the sciences if you want as well. A lot of versatility when it comes to your undergraduate studies. And as a bigger institution, we also have a lot of other things happening. 21 Division I sports teams were the Binghamton Bearcats. You know, we love the Bearcats, and competing at the, the D1 level is certainly bringing a lot of pride and spirit and, and, and community involvement. But... Binghamton's a little different than the other big public well-known institutions in the sense that athletics is just one of the things happening on a given weekend or weeknight. It's not the thing that we're known for. It's actually really that academic core or truly that the Binghamton balance. Now, I know I went through this quickly. There's 130 areas of study, six different colleges are pre-health, pre-med path, pre-law track. These are very popular avenues. Many of our students are going on to graduate school. Some are staying at Binghamton for an accelerated program in one extra year if they'd like. We have our Watson College of Engineering that has many different engineering majors. But again, you could also be taking a double major in music if you wanted to. Our School of Management is incredibly well known, but we have deep, deep connections here in New York City. So that's part of it. It's the one of the many pathways you can pursue business though through Binghamton, not just through our School of Management. Our College of Community Public Affairs is well designed for those students who know they wanna make an impact in this world and develop communities in a, in a better way than we have in the past. So a lot of versatility there. Our newest school, uh, our newest facilities actually just opened up for our, our Decker College of Nursing and Health Sciences, as well as our School of Pharmacy, which does a lot of research but there is a six year track in pharmaceutical sciences if that's something that you're really interested in. Now there's 90 public colleges and universities in New York. You as New Yorkers have a ton of options, public and private, but on the public front for many years, Binghamton has brought in the most academically talented students, particularly just even our average student is well beyond what you'd find at the average profile for most of the public universities and colleges in New York all this really means is that you're surrounding yourself with some really bright students from all over the world. We have students from well over 100 countries, all 50 states. Again, everybody's living together, learning together. We have uh, an R1 research university platform, meaning we have to do research in all areas of study. There's 14,000 undergrads, only about 4,000 grad students. Our focus is the undergraduates, which is a little different than most big public research universities. So keep that in mind for the last two years in a row, we got the number one spot in the nation for sustainability research. And we are still a one of five schools in the nation where first year students are fully funded to be able to do research through our FRI program. So applications are straightforward and easy to do, but my key advice is if you're leaning towards a competitive college, you probably wanna to lean towards the early action stage for a school like Binghamton. So. I think we're ready for some of our bigger questions now. All right, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Binghamton University, please get them in. We do have a few more minutes. Now my panelists and presenters, I invite you back via video. I do have a quick question for you all. 
Uh, we can do a round robin presentation order. Again, just a quick question. You all are the experts. So my question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And Lemoyne College, you are first. Hello, hello. My advice would be to try to visit or at least talk to somebody that's a student at the school. You wouldn't buy a car without test driving it, so it's really hard to pick a college without being able to see either virtually or in person really what you're getting into. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Try to visit and make connections with folks on campuses that you're interested in. Awesome. Thank you. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is going to be to ask questions. Um, that's what we are all here for. That's what we do. We're here for you guys to ask questions and give you answers and make sure you know everything about where you're thinking about applying or have applied and thinking about going to. Um, so yeah, never be afraid. That's, again, that's what we're here for. Awesome. Thank you. St. John's. Uh, my biggest piece of advice is, uh, especially for the students and, and parents as well, um, more so talking to the students, it's about you. Uh, make sure that you're, as you're going through this process, you're really thinking about what's the best fit for you and what you want, um, you know, and not making a decision um, because your parents want you to do something or your friends are going somewhere, right? Really think about what you want and what's going to make you happy at the end of the day. Awesome advice so far, University of British Columbia, what would you add? It's an exciting time, but I know that it is a stressful one and there's a lot of pressure. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about how it's okay to not know what you want. Um, like we're asking you to make some decisions when you're like barely an adult um, that yes, can have a big impact on your future, but also like don't have to be like, you know, anything more than just saying, this is what I think I want right now, maybe and hopefully it works out. And if it doesn't, there's lots of other great paths. Um, so just wanted to try and relieve some of that stress and pressure because it's not gonna help. <laughs> um, so do your best to take some deep breaths, live in the moment and um, yeah, make sure you reach out for support. Good stuff, Babson College. Yeah, I'll probably again, piggyback off of the last piece of advice in a sense of, um, yes, you don't have to know what you wanna do right away, but maybe have an idea of what you like and what you enjoy and what you're good at. Um, kind of helps the process of elimination a little bit. Um, so kind of figuring out what schools are maybe strong and what you enjoy um, and kind of will, will narrow out the process a little easier and kind of maybe if you want a big city or a small city, again, all those little factors definitely help the process a little, um, a lot much uh, kind of more down the line. And so again, you know, no rush, you definitely have a lot of time, but um, again, definitely helps kind of, you know, knowing maybe what path you want to go down um, a little early, so. Awesome, thank you. Binghamton University. Hmm. Great advice so far. A lot of it. Uh, I would say, look, you all are, you're really smart uh, parents and students. You got into a, an, a very good high school. Get beyond the numbers when you're looking at colleges and universities and, and frankly, almost somewhat forget about them at a certain point. Because once you look at similar schools, the statistics aren't going to be your deciding factor, or at least they shouldn't be. They can actually maybe even trip you up and get you focused on something that you don't know a whole lot about, but you think the number is telling you the answer, whether it's graduation rate, whether it's placement rate, whether it's acceptance rate or selectivity. Those are dangerous areas to kind of think you're an expert in when they're really serving a general answer, not an individual answer. Lean towards what your kind of feelings are telling you, what your thoughts and your excitement is telling you versus uh, the average numbers or the statistics of success. Great advice, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I mean, my attendees, my participants, you, you heard it here first from the experts, right? So I just want to thank uh, my experts in the group here, uh, my panels and presenters for being here. Thank you so much. Again, extremely important what you all do. So thank you for being here. Uh, my uh, participants, my, my audience, my attendees, thank you so much for joining us. Again, this is an appetizer session. So now it's your turn to do your due diligence and dive deeper into these universities and schools. Uh, with that said, after you close this window, a very quick five question survey will appear. The words very quick are literally on your screen. So it is going to be very quick. Uh, sign up for more sessions. This is the last day of these virtual college fairs. We have two more sessions coming up here. And remember, if you would like to relive the fun, a recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash Brooklyn Tech.
with that said, you all again, thank you so, so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your night. Bye everybody.